Don't address her. Come over. So our uh, instruction course uh, will be will be talking about the risk factors and interpretation of the risk factors the biomechanical analysis the imaging which is very very important pre-op uh, tool to assess uh, the suitability of the eye for the uh, laser and uh, then variables and modification according to the uh, investigations which we have performed and uh, the most important fact where which is uh, the legal issues because these are all young patients young eyes and they have uh, long way to go long time ahead of them so any complication occurring at a later point in time is a big big uh, you know legal issue so that's uh, that's another factor which has to be taken into account uh, dr zaida you just want to start from that podium uh, Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much, sir, for being, for having me in this prestigious meeting and giving me the opportunity for the, the next time to speak in this uh, huge conference. And my talk will be about the when ectesia is not ectesia actually, because we have a lot of cases uh, at which or on examination or checking the pentacams, we you may find that the pentacam diagnosing this case as a, an, a case of coronus or DJ, but actually it's not. So I will start my talk by this noon. Uh, don't forget that you are an ophthalmologist. You have to correlate even the clinical data with the, with the paper data you have from your pentacam. Don't diagnose your patients by papers only, because you are not an, an interpreter wait, wait, by wait. the papers, but, you're, but you are a pharmacist. The first case, the first case Do is 38-year-old female with, with past history of LASIK, of bilateral LASIK two years ago, I was a surgeon. On the last visit was one year ago. The un uncorrected visual acuity was 6.6 six bilaterally. So I was very happy. On this time, on the, uh, the uh, July 2019, she came to me again with panic and depression with rapid drop of the visual acuity. The un uncorrected visual acuity was 160 in the right eye and 360 in the left eye. And the best corrected was 260 and 660. So 
I was emaciated and depressed too. On doing the refraction for hair, the refraction was minus eight sphere, minus nine cylinder. On this axis in the right eye and minus four sphere, and minus five cylinder on the left eye. The normal, with normal intraocular pressure and normal fundi. Uh, there was very minimal KPs, keratic precipitates of the back of cornea with almost clear corneas around it. So I was sad and uh, I, I, cannot, I cannot expect and I cannot diagnose this patient until now, but me and you, I think all of us will consider this case a case of post lasik ectesia, right? And in this, in this moment, I was asking how switched of the room of the light, the, 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 the room lights. This is a picture on presentation for her cornea. We, we may find it completely clear cornea. There is no scars. There is no uh, other abnormalities could detect or could lead us to the diagnosis. And this is the pentacam. This is her pentacam on, 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 the, uh, on that week. You will find that there is central steepening and the sagittal curvature. And you may find that the uh, anterior elevation, posterior elevations are almost within normal. But please look carefully at this pentacam. You may find something which is not matching with a, with a TG. Can I, have a, can I have a pointer, please? Yeah. When, you like, when you look here, you will find this central steepening with inferior, more, more steepening inferiorly. The, uh, the anterior elevation almost within the accepted range and also the posterior elevations. But the thickness is the first striking issue in this pentacam. The central corneal thickness was more than normal, even, even in the non-ablated cornea. The central thickness was reaching 700, and the thinnest location was five, five, eight, nine micrometer, and it is shifted up. It's, it was away, it is away from the steepening or the protruded part of the cornea. So my mind was shifted in this moment to think about something other away from the cornea, away from the ectegia, which is actually related to the kibis which, which I have found on the examination of the cornea. If we, if we could back again to the cornea, this minimal kibis, which is not uh, appearing enough or, or, or uh, which is not huge, which is not a lot, which is not immersing the back of the cornea to be important one. So I ignored them during examination of the patient clinically in my clinic, but when I saw the pentacam, when I saw the central thickness in this, in this patient and this uh, increased thickness out of the accepted range I found this case as a corneal edema. It's a corneal edema, not corneal ectegia. This is the second eye. I will skip for the time. So I start again to take my breath and to get my smile again about this case. It's not ectegia. Uh, otherwise, I will treat. I will deal with it. This is the corneal thickness by the OCT to be more accurate. And this is the speaker microscopy for her. So I started treatment as a case of corneal edema by the normal C-line, 5%, prednisolone and lubricants. And still thinking, after one week, she came to my clinic by this image, which, which uh, assuring my diagnosis about this case is a case of the corneal 
in Yemen, the two central uh, insult may be herpetic keratides and could be another, another called the two uh, related to the autoimmune diseases. So, I started to deal with the same, changing the mind viral or autoimmune by the oral cycle of VAR 400 mi milligram uh, every eight hours, topical cycle of VAR five times daily, fluoromethylone with uh, the least dose and immunomodulator, and after 10 days, no response. So turn it to aggressive autoimmune therapy together with a consultant of autoimmune diseases, which advised me to start systemic therapy with injectable methotrexate under his supervision, the oral prednisolone 100 milligram and topical hydrocortisone ointment, and the primary DN to control the intraocular pressure. After two weeks, there was marvelous improvements. So the pentacam started to, tur to return back to its normal configuration. The, there is a, 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 a decrease, mar uh, market decrease in the steep, steepest K and market improvement in the corneal thickness. If you compare between both points, the thinnest location is 500, uh, is 500 microns and in the, in the recent one, the old one was 580 in the right eye. Also on the left, you will find the same results. And after three weeks more, more improvements in the pentacam, and she turned back to the clear corneal, the corneal center again, with unaided visual acuity with of 612 and 69. Almost clear cornea, restored hair vision and mood wellness, actually the patient and her doctor. I have another case if I have a time, but actually the time is, is out. Can I have just one mi minute One more? minute, yeah. One minute, okay, yeah. the case two. This patient, 26 year female patient came to my clinic with previous diagnosis of coronavirus. It's actually, when you look th to at this pentacam, you may think about something else. Can you share me about that? This is, this is a picture of coronavirus. There is steepening, superior and inferior, and almost the same superior and inferior steepening. And the briefer parts are well. The corneal thickness map is not bad. The anterior elevation, the posterior elevations are also within the accepted range. And this is the other eye, almost the same. And this patient, uh, other doctor planned her, planned for keratoplasty or even the intracranial rings and the cross-linking for her to deal with her as a keratoconus. But this is the picture of the patient. So correlate the clinical data uh, uh, always with the paper data. When you look at this uh, this images for her eye, you will find that there is peripheral degeneration with some central tongues, which is not apparent well in these images. And this is not a case of coronavirus, this is a case of degeneration like that after the hyperbic ablation. Peripheral thinning leading to counteracting central steepening, which is not coronavirus, but steep corneum. The other eye. So the refraction of her one minus eight cylinder in the right and minus six in the left. Please, wi please wind up your presentation. Yeah. Please wind up your presentation. Yes, okay. Yeah. Okay, right. Best corrected with well, this refraction 624 The and all, all the other things were, were, were normal. So what the diagnosis, is it coronavirus? Uh, I, 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 I am not with this, this diagnosis. What about you? Then what to do? 
This is the image with I bought. Thinning leads to uh, LE. the central thinning. Uh, sorry, the peripheral thinning leads to protrusion of the center. So, th like this body, the head is bigger in relation to this. Uh, the head in relation to this body is bigger. So, the anterior marginal degeneration and ma my management thoughts could be customized ablation procedure to be guided or wave front guided. I don't know about you, and thank you very much.